What's hiding underneath things can be scary. Underwater, under your bed, especially what's under your carpet. Except when you get new carpet from Carpet One Floor and Home. After tearing up your old carpet, they'll vacuum and apply Healthinex antimicrobial to your subfloor, disinfecting and killing mold, mildew, and any remaining general awfulness. Carpet One Floor and Home goes the extra mile to protect you, your family, and your home. Carpet One Floor and Home in Columbia, making your home beautiful, guaranteed. Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Tuesday, July 14th. And in the studio with us this morning with our social distancing, we have Nadia Navarrete Tyndall, native plants and more. And Nadia is with Lincoln University. Good to have you back again, Nadia. Hi, it's really nice to be here. It's yeah. been a while. <laughs> it, it, has, it has been a long time, hasn't it? But you wanted to talk about native plants. In fact, that, that's your life is, is native plants. Mm-hmm. We have so many beautiful ones here mm-hmm. uh, in, in central Missouri. But mainly wetland plants today? I thought that it would be fun to talk about something that people can do in the summer, like start growing wetland plants. Okay. You don't need to, uh, I mean, it doesn't matter how hot it is if you have your water and and you can, I just want to talk about what people can do at okay. home, uh, how they can grow them and some of them that could be eaten. All right, but w- what if they don't have a lake or a pond, how do you grow wetland plants? Well, I don't have a pond or a lake, so I have to just do, uh, do with buckets, or I, I actually, we have one container that's like half barrels, the, the, those plastic barrels, or just uh, something that doesn't leak water. So that's, and, you're, you're, you're simulating a lake or a pond for the yeah. plants. Yeah, and it's just for fun. In a, in a small yard, you cannot afford to have a, a, a lake or a pond. So a, a pond. So I just have those buckets, and then uh, what you do is you have to get your plants. And first, you have to fill the, the bucket with soil, then uh, plant your little little plants, maybe two or three per bucket, and and then put gravel on top that to hold the soil and the plant, and then put, sorry, uh, uh, pour the water on top, and, and you then have just to keep let them, them sit. You have to keep the water all the time, right? It has to be submerged in the water. Yeah, and the point, uh, I mean, you have to study your plants. I'm, I want to mention three plants that are. Very um, beautiful. They can attract pollinators, and you can actually eat them, part of them. And you brought some pictures along. Yes. This one is called arrowhead or duck potato. And there is D-U-C-K, duck potato. Duck potato. You know what those look like? They look like taro leaves that grow in Hawaii that poi is made from. And they grow also in water. And they, they are wetland plants. Yeah. If I'm, if we're talking about the same plant, this particular one will grow in shallow water. They need to have the roots in soil. And so you can do that in, in a bucket, as I was explaining before. They're pretty. And they can also, uh, you can also eat the roots well, actually, are rhizomes, like a, a modified stem, and it's like a tuber, and so you can you can cook with those. You know, duck potatoes. I'll, I'll, I'll bet they are related to the taro plant from the tropics. They they are. I don't know if they're in the same family, but they are. They do look alike, and they are related. And you eat, in, you can directly. eat the roots. So what what you do with the taro is you boil it and then you crush it, mm-hmm. and you make poi. So. With this, you're not making poi. What are you doing with the roots? This is simple. Uh, you can just use them for recipes that call for water chestnut. Well, that that is the the consistency. Like you can use it in Chinese dishes, uh-huh. and also you can pickle them. And they are it's very hard to pick uh, to harvest them from uh, a pond. So at Lincoln, we're t- doing a uh, small demonstration area just to let's do some observations and see how they can grow. If they grow enough, so you can harvest them at home. So at the same time you're growing your plants, you can you can eat the the tubers. Now, can people come to Lincoln University? 
and see what you are doing? Is that open or available to the public? Like here, we are keeping our distance, and also we are using masks for, with for, with every visitor that we have. We had had people coming, but we would like to have very few at a time. Just a few at a time. Yeah, I if it's a family, of course they can come together, but I don't want to have more than five people at a time. Right, but can they contact you <clears throat> at Lincoln University if they would like to come? And, and see this display of what you're talking about? Yeah, and I they can find me on my Facebook page that is still called Native Plants and More. And also they send me an email at my Lincoln University email, which is navarrete tindle n at Lincoln edu. Okay, but if they go to the Lincoln University website, they could also find you on there. Yeah, right? or if they don't find me. Sometimes the the websites don't work. Uh, you can ch- we can they can find me in my uh, Facebook page. Send okay. me a message. Okay. You you brought uh, another <clears throat> a picture of a flower. This yeah. is what with a hummingbird. Yeah, and this is actually in my place. We have a, a small rain garden, and my husband took that picture. Randy, Tindall. now this is, and this is a purple-looking stem plant, right? It has flowers that are purple, and the the leaves are not showing, but they are next to the water, and also like um, arrowhead, it needs to be uh, growing in soil, but they in in water, and so it's always wet, and but sometimes they they can stand some periods of. Um, like not completely wet. Yeah. So they survive. And the next one is Lotus, L-O-T-U-S. It's like the Lotus from the, the Japanese. Uh, oh, that's beautiful. So much. That's a white, beautiful bloom. And these yeah. grow here in the lakes and wetland areas. Right? Yeah. And people that own ponds don't like them because they spread really well. As you can see, but uh, you can grow them at home, and then you can, and then it's a way to harvest. Okay. And this is uh, the root of lotus that is being pickled, and ah. with uh, with a Chinese dressing. All right. So there's all kinds of information. If you want more of this, you can contact uh, Nadia Navarrete Tyndall at Lincoln University and go to the Lincoln University website or go to Nadia's Facebook page and you can get all the information that you need. Nadia, thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. You're welcome and nice happy gardening you. and stay safe, okay? Thank you. Yeah, if there's something you'd like to hear or see, I'd love to hear from you. Drop me an email. That's pepperp at missouri.edu. Tomorrow, Kathy Salter will be with us. Bye-bye.